Okay, um, I'm gonna start doing some research into why YouTube keeps shutting down the live streams. Cause that's kind of frustrating. Anyway, I'll wait for people to hop over. Well, there's a thumbs up. Okay, there's people. All right. Um, yeah. So I need to make a more dedicated video about how to like fit things. Um, I think when I visit with my friend later this year, um, I will do all the proper fitting and things on her and film it. Um, that way I can like give clear instructions and we're doing things in like a really, not really tutorial classroom, classroom type setting. So yeah, there's that. All right. So yeah, um, I purposely built the bodice so that way it would be very self-supporting, which is why when, well, my dress form's smaller than I am, um, so I'll be able to like pin it closed. But when I wear it in person, it's very supportive. Oh, excuse me. But we've talked about it in past lives. Um, I have horse hair hem horsehair braid at the hem so that's exciting it gives it some volume on its own so so something that I probably need to do and haven't yet is um, put hooks and eyes in the center front. I'm not terribly worried about it. I'll see how I feel when I have everything on. So. Bet that your boobs are in the wrong place. You don't squish like a human, so. Nope. So I have extra room in the sides here, which make it more comfortable, and then there's all this extra room in the bust which really isn't extra room when I put it on my body. So underneath here, like we said, she would be wearing a farthingale, a padded skirt, whatever, to help the hem. Um, and then she would also be wearing a hip roll. I think my hip roll goes out maybe about this big. So you can already see how she's gonna get, like we're gonna get the conical shape with it because we have, um, like this part here that's going to go out and then if the hem was supported as well we would get this conical shape that way so i'm just not putting any of those foundations on because as you saw betsy needs some help oh excuse me i'm like burping up my lunch this tastes terrible all right so the next layer is the bodice so ideally, I wanted to just have the bodice be pad stitched, um, but like that just wasn't a thing, um, mostly because of the construction. So I think if I would have had the skirt go down to a the under bodice go down to a point, um, then it would have worked better. Um, but the problem that we ran into when I did my fitting with my friend was the point of the dress kept flipping up because it was in contest with all the cartridge pleats on the skirt. So there's that. To combat that, I put boning, three boning channels that mimic the guards. So that's exciting. Um, I think the hardest part of the whole bodice was actually making the under bodice invisible from the front. Well, the under bodice invisible in general. Um, 
mostly just because I didn't want it to poke through and be seen. Because that just, it, it just seemed like it would look a little tacky. And I'm sure in a historical context, it would have been absolutely fine. But to my modern eyes and the Russian voice in my head, it was not acceptable. <laughs> This bodice is a little bit small. Um, I don't think it fits me as well as I thought it did when I drafted everything out. So I'm also, you know, 40 pounds heavier than when I drafted this out. roll on it would pad that out and you can see how um, like the padding here would definitely help with the comical shape this does give me more of like an actual waist look anyway this is a terrible representation of what it looks like on my body but that's okay um, it'll look great when I like film everything so Let's actually open up this ribbon and tie a couple of like big fluffy bows. Cause why not? We're like dressing up Betsy anyway. So I think I missed some comments. Those colors are so pretty. I know they make me happy. So something that I need to do is sew um, some lacing rings into the shoulder here. That way I have something that I can use to attach the ribbon. Um, and then I'll also sew some lacing rings into the sleeves, but for now I will just pin them. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, the worst bow in history there. There we go. So the sleeve. make a couple more bows. a little bit of the fluff at the shoulder. I don't know if I'm going to leave the tails this long. That seems very like ren fair to me. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but the goal definitely is to get a little bit of poof here, um, which is accurate for the time period. Just having the bows there I don't think is, um, but having some sort of like poof on the cap of the sleeve definitely is. Those are the sleeves. Um, 
the overdress has a freaking huge long train and if you want to see how the sleeves look with the overdress you can go to my Instagram because I don't feel like pulling out that overdress right now that's I mean it is just right there but managing that train in this small of a space is a lot so I don't know I'm really excited um, I was a little bit worried about introducing a secondary color of brown but I feel like it matches enough so yeah I am so excited that this is almost done so excited convincing my husband to lace me into this thing gonna have to be really nice. Maybe make him some cookies. So. Yeah, I kind of like info dumped a lot on you guys um, and really shared a lot of like the process of it. So I hope you liked it. Oh, let's put the jewelry down. Because that's a good one. There's the necklace. probably won't show up very well on screen but I really like how bright the dress is and then how muted the jewelry is so this isn't gonna stay um, without without the hip roll what happened what are you stuck on there we go because the hip roll is really what holds this into place but I can pin it so you guys can I just went underneath. Okay, that's not going to want to stay. I give up. I tried pinning it twice. super excited and I think that's all I had to share with you guys do you have any questions on like the dress or the process of it or anything oh, those sleeves just look so good I'm so glad I did those sleeves um, I was thinking about buying a mannequin do you recommend it yes make sure you get one in a good quality I do not recommend adjustable ones um, because they break really easily um, and yeah I would recommend it I mean it's good to be able to like just quickly dress things up it's good if you do a lot of draping draping is how I learned how to pattern so it was really helpful for that um, it's also really good to like get a quick look of how things go together so like me personally getting into this dress would have taken twice as long as dressing up Betsy. Um, but there's also ways around it if you can't afford it. I sewed with that one for a really long time too. So it's an amazing gown. Great job. Yeah, I am super proud of it. Um, Facebook reminded me a yesterday um, that this time last year I was working on my Ravenclaw dress. And that was just kind of like a really nostalgic moment for me because like my Ravenclaw dress is a reproduction of the Eleanor de Toledo burial gown based on the pattern found in Jana Arnold. And doing a version of that dress um, or this like high court, um, Veni not Venetian, high court Florentine gown style gown has been like on my costuming bucket list since I started seriously doing this. 10 years ago? 8 years ago? Started when I was 17. Um, like seriously doing historical clothing when I was 17.
So, yeah. And, like, realizing last year, like, I have no excuse not to make this dress. I have the technical skill. I have the basic knowledge. I have access to the patterns. I know how to draft things up from a grid. Um, I realized that I really had no excuses anymore. And so that's when I made the Ravenclaw dress. Um, and then the fur and coat that I wear with it, I had actually started on the year before. So it gave me a reason to like finish an unfinished project um, and to get my dream dress. And I was just so proud of it. And I still really am. I still really like that dress. Um, but I'm also really proud of this dress. Um, I feel like both are really good representations of the burial gown as well as the crimson piece of gown in their own respects and it's really interesting to compare and contrast the two on like the difference in silhouette as well as like shape and function um so yeah it's been it's been a fun interesting thing to like compare and contrast the two on full size because i've done the same thing on my on my dolls for a scale model um, but doing it full size and actually like putting it on and seeing how it feels is a totally different experience. Plus, I love fancy, fancy clothes. So my favorite time period of dress is um, 1530 to 5060 um, Florence, Italy. It is this. I like the high court renaissance. Um, I also really, for everyday history bounding stuff, I really like Edwardian and the 1950s. Um, and I f have found that Edwardian era clothing and vintage 1950s actually goes to together in like a really fun, quirky style. Um, so yeah, I actually learned that there was a technical term for that because like in the 50s, um, in secondhand thrift shops, um, Edwardian clothing was accessible. It was there. It's like how we can find vintage pieces in um, thrift, st thrift stops thrift shops now so like a part of the rebellion youth and like the up and coming middle classes this is like one documentary that I have watched on the topic so don't quote me on everything um but they claimed that it was like partly rebellious youth and partly like up and coming like middle class people would go to the thrift shops and buy these Edwardian clothings and like mix it in with their contemporary wardrobe at the time. Um, and they were called like teddy girls or teddy boys. Um, and so I'm just like, oh, this was like an actual thing in fashion, which was so cool to me. Um, of course, they wouldn't wear like the actual um, undergarments with it, which makes sense. But anyway, it was um, like a really cool concept to learn about. So. I can see the two combining in a really unique fashion. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun like mixing and matching the like vintage inspired and the Edwardian inspired pieces in my wardrobe. Um, and truthfully, they both have a similar silhouette, so why wouldn't they be interchangeable? Um, so yeah, it's just, it's super exciting for me. I definitely want to start exploring my wardrobe more. Um, and well like exploring my style more because I just I love that so yeah we'll see that maybe sometime next year I'll do another what's in my closet thing with all of you guys um, and like dress up and show you outfits and things because that was that was fun to do but my wardrobe hasn't really changed since we did that back in March April Teddy girls were also called Judy's. Ooh, I, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you guys now have like a term and something to, uh, what's it called? Something to look up. So, it's exciting. We'll chat. Oh, Casey, my vintage queen. I'm so excited for this conversation. <laughs> I'm actually really excited. You know about this, Casey? How did you not tell me that you knew about this concept? I thought we were friends. <laughs> I've been talking about what I want my wardrobe to be for like the past, not year, but. 
um, like a couple months. When did I start? January-ish is when I started doing stuff. I didn't know you knew about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And just This concept is so cool. And, okay, Casey, we're, we're going to have conversations. Um, let's see. I don't think I have anything else for you guys, so I'm probably just going to end the live now. We've, it's been about an hour or two, so it's about time to end. So it was super good to hang out with all of you, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys. Oh, end. <laughs>